Hi, y'all. How you doing? Okay. Let's see here. We got a glove down here somewhere. Got a lot of golfers out there? Yeah. You do? We're going to move out here. Move out here where people can see. That makes sense? Well, we'll go ahead here and hit a few balls, loosen up. And then we're going to go play the golf course. What we tried to do here at IBIS, we've got three golf courses that have um, been designed by our company. I did the first golf course and the golf course we're going to play today. And Jackie's done the second golf course. And then Tom Pearson in our office is doing the third golf course. First project that Jackie and I have been involved in together in doing a golf course. And uh, be interesting to see what, what turns out. So uh, this golf course, though, is uh, a little over 7,200 yards from the back. It's a Pretty long golf course, a strong golf course, but it's also only about 5,500 yards from the front, so it's a fairly short golf course from the front. So you ought to be able to find somewhere in between there that you can play, have a golf course that suits you. And that's what we're trying to do is build a golf course that'll suit you. So we're going to play that golf course today, and as we go here, I'm going to hit a few shots to loosen up. I'm going to start out with a pitching wedge. And all I do with a pitching wedge is try to hit a few, try to hit, get loosened up and try not to hurt myself. Uh, for the first few shots. Oh, here's Jackson. There he is. There's the golfer of the family. This is the ex-golfer of the family. Anyway, with the pitching wedge, Fairly narrow stance and fairly stable over the ball. Try to be. Try to be in a position that you play in any other sport. Stand with my weight evenly balanced. I don't want it on my heels or my toes or my right foot or my left foot. Well, pretty well, everything's squared up to my feet, my hips. Uh, shoulders all pretty well squared up. My knees are not, or my legs are not straight. My legs are not bent. My legs are relaxed is what we call ready position or playing any sport, you play from the same position. And from that position, I'm pretty well balanced. And I just go ahead and take the club back and let it fly. I think the head is a very important part of the golf swing, wanting to remain steady in one position. And we try just to rotate around that position. Now, after I've hit a few shots to where I don't really care, then I start to think a little bit about what I'm doing, my tempo, my timing, what I'm doing with a swing. Jack will pretty much do about the same thing. Loosen up and try to get a feeling. When you go to practice, this is the least my least favorite wind to practice in left to right and a little downwind you ha you can't tell anything <laughs> what you're doing so when i get a wind like this all i do is warm up the practice range goes in that direction I just warm up and get off of it and get going and uh, i'm going to practice i'll wait until the wind stops or goes from the other direction or go to the other end of the practice range or something else to be able to practice but before a round, I warm up. Eight iron. A little, uh, little longer club, a little less loft. The ball's obviously going to go a shade further. 
Again, my head remains steady, remains in the same position. I want to try to make the game of golf as simple as I can. I try to be as fundamental as I can with good balance. I want to finish with my weight on my left foot. I want to be able to stand here and watch the ball land if I can. Obviously, with the left to right wind, a little over my left shoulder, the ball is going to get up and slip a little bit to the right. That was an eight iron. Now I've moved to a five iron. With a five iron, uh, I've got a little longer club, obviously, a little less loft. Ball will go a little bit further. You notice that. I don't know whether where, where we came from here, but Jackie and I are not exactly built alike. He views the world from a different place. And uh, obviously, with different builds, our swings are going to be different. And different and we have different problems in, in our golf swing. Being tall, Jack's problem is going to be to be able to control the, his legs and be able to control how he can use that and get down to the golf ball. I'm being a little shorter. Uh, I'm going to be a little flatter from a natural standpoint, so I want to make sure how I can get a little bit more upright to be able to control those things. I, mean, I think we all have different, you know, everybody has a different body, have different set of circumstances to use. But we all use the same fundamentals. I, Jackie's fundamentals try to be the same as mine. He tries to have a good solid grip, a good solid posture, a good solid uh, 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 position over the ball, a good head position, tries to rotate around his head, tries to keep uh, the golf swing on a, a nice even flow tries to keep your, uh, your grip pressure basically the same throughout the golf swing. You try to keep the speed of your swing the same. And the end result is uh, if we can both get it on a green, uh, which one can make the most putts? That's what we try to do. So I've got a five iron here. I'm trying to do the same thing again. Right now, with this wind, let's just say that I want, I'm it's not, obviously not going to be too hard to fade the ball. If I wanted to fade the ball, all I do is open the club face at address and aim to the left of the target and use exactly the same swing. That'll produce a little bit more fade on the golf shot. That's how I fade the ball. But if I have a little tree out there on the golf course someplace, but I want to hit it around. I guarantee you that if I turn the club face like that, it's going to hook. You think that ball will hook from there? I think that's got a good chance of hooking no matter what I do. Okay, there we go. Now see if we can get a hook out of that. But the thing I'm, the point I'm trying to make here, or I'm not really trying to have made the point yet, but is that the golf ball will go either way. The club face controls that. If you have the club face like that, it can't do anything but hook. It's like that, it can't do anything but slice. And all of us have a tendency to either play one way or the other. We either play left to right or right to left. And I think it's kind of fun to be able to see the golf ball do what you think it's going to do and you swing at it. I mean, nothing worse than saying, oh, I'm going to hit a little slicer and you hit up and then you hit a hook. Uh, but if you, we all have a tendency to do one or the other. And I think you ought to use that, use it to your best ability. I don't think anybody can hit the golf ball straight. So I never aim the ball at the target. I either aim the ball to the left of the target and fade it, or aim to the right of the ball and hook it. If I do those kind of things, then uh, I play what is natural for me, what I feel best, uh, I feel most comfortable with. And you know, right to left may be most comfortable for Jackie sometimes. Left to right might be more comfortable for me. And between the two of us, we should be able to end up with something we want. And so. I, my feeling through the years, my best golf has been played left to right. And I basically aimed just to the left of the target, had the fake club face slightly open at address, taken my swing, stayed well behind, swung underneath the ball. Golf ball's gone up and had a tendency just to drop off to the right, which is what that's doing. And that's just the way I've played. Now I've got a two iron. Easiest club in the bag to play. You know why it is, don't you? Why it's an easy club to play? <laughs> well, it's the most difficult club for most people simply because all your friends and neighbors told you it was difficult, right? Everybody says, two iron, you're going to play a two iron, that tough club? 
Well, why are you going to do that? Well, I think it's probably the shot. Yeah, but you can't play it. Nobody else can either. So what do you do? You get up to the ball. You say, well, I can't play this, so I'm going to change my swings to make sure I can use, use some. And then you hit it. And you say, OK, now it's out there where I can hit the ball onto the green with a club I like to play. Give me my seven iron, please. So uh, what I'd suggest when you get your long irons, it shouldn't be any more difficult for you to play than a, a two iron than a seven iron, is just get here and say this is a, just say this is a seven iron. And you sit there, and if you don't like it, you can put a piece of tape over it and write seven on it. Matter of fact, if you like seven, you can write it on all your clubs if you want. But the point we're trying to make there is we're trying to use one golf swing one golf swing only through the bag. And if you can try to swing each golf club the same, then you've got a good chance of trying to come up with uh, a consistent result with your golf clubs. So what I do is I go out in the practice team with a two iron and a seven iron. I hit a seven iron, hit a two iron, hit a seven iron, hit a two iron, until I can hit the two iron the same way I hit the seven iron. And I think you're going to find that your results will get better. And obviously you'll find that you don't swing them the same. If you practice them together, then I think you'll find out that you might be able to swing them the same and all of a sudden get better results. So let's say here, I've got this seven iron in my hand. It says two on the bottom, but it's only a seven iron. And let's just see what happens here if we just use the same seven iron swing. Good gracious, look how far that seven iron went. Huh? Wasn't that fun? Now we hit that hook and slice with the, uh, with a five iron. If I want to hit the ball low, which I'm going to have to hit some low shots today, then it would seem to me that uh, into the wind, I want to move the ball low. I might take the club face and just close it a little bit, which will produce a hook. But I'm going to move it back in my stance a little bit, so I hit a little bit more on the downswing. And I really will come a little bit from the inside, and I'll just hit a low hook, which will be a nice shot to hit into the wind. So let's move it back here. Use exactly the same swing, just a different ball position. And there's a shot that we might want to hit into the wind. This is obviously not into the wind, but it's not too bad. Now, you know, there might be some holes out here, too, that we're going to have to hit the ball up in the air because we might want to stop them on the green. Well, if I'm going to hit the ball up in the air, it seems to me if I open the club face, that'll put loft on the club. And if I move it up in my stance, and I'll catch a little bit more on the upswing. I'll come to square a little later. That's how I hit a high shot. So I just move it up a little bit and open the club face slightly. And then just take a normal swing. That should be high enough for a two iron, don't you think? Gosh, I think I'll turn pro. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here we go. Now the, the hardest club with the least amount of, or the, or the hardest club to play in the bag to me is probably the three wood because it's, it's the longest club with the least amount of loft that you play off the ground. And so, but to me, I, when I get to a three wood, then I just say, OK, let's just use exactly the same swing. It's just another seven iron. Let's just take the same swing. Let's see what happens here. And we set it right there. Good balance, good head position, good tempo. I still don't even see any reason to hit any more of those. OK. Got that club down, why hit another one, right? Okay, now, now I've got a driver. Now you notice I tee the ball fairly high. You know why I do that? A lot of you know that. Because I've through the years I've found that air has far less resistance than dirt. Right? Well, that's right, it does. How many times you go on a tee and you see people that tee the ball up and all you see all these divots? And people have been hitting behind the ball. Good gracious, they don't hit it any place when you hit behind it, do you? No, the other thing is, here we are. As little play as we've had at Ibis so far, look at these divots on this tee. Now, you walk backers have just as much play on the back tee so far as we've had on the front tee. Now, why are these divots here on this tee? What does the average golfer do to get these divots? Well, the average golfer gets a club back here, and he decides he's going to hit it down from the top. He's going to hit from the outside. Well, when you hit the club from the outside, you don't have any, have any power. You say, you've heard all your life, hit the ball from the inside, hit the ball from the inside. Well, why do you want to hit the ball from the inside? Do you have any reason why you want to hit the ball from the inside? Anybody know? If you're going to try and hit the ball 
try to create, you're trying to transfer all the energy of this golf club to that golf ball. And it seems to me, if I come in at the same angle I want the golf ball to go out, then I'm transferring as much of that energy as I can. Now, the only way to transfer that energy to the golf ball is to come down from the inside so the club is low coming through the ball. If the club comes from the outside, then the club's starting to come down at an angle like this. You got the club coming down at an outside angle, coming at this angle, you have to let the ball to go at this angle. So it seems to me you're not going to get an opposite, uh, an equal and opposite reaction. You're not going to get the transfer of energy. You've dissipated because of the oblique angle that you're coming in. Obviously, you've lost power. So when you go to the front tees, you see where they've lost power because you see all the divots. You go to the back tees, you never see any divots because a good golfer has learned to hit the golf ball from the inside. If you want to transfer that power from the inside, come in at a low angle, and we'll see what happens here. Okay. About as good as I can do. I don't have anything else. Now, the only thing I have left to do is to hit it further. The only way I knew how to hit, how to hit it further is to make this move faster, right? The only thing I know. And now when I have a tendency, somebody says, okay, Jack, we want you to hit it further. And somebody says it to you, they want you to hit the ball further. What do you do? The first thing you do is you get all excited, you get all tensed up, you swing faster, you swing shorter, and you don't hit it at all, right? Okay? So when I'm going to hit the ball further, I make a very conscious effort to, I know the adrenaline's going to flow, so I know that I'm going to hit it harder because I'm, just because I'm excited. So if I make a very conscious effort to allow all parts of my swing happen to their fullest degree, then I've got a chance of being able to create all the things in my golf swing that I want to create. That, that excitement's going to make me hit the ball a little further, but if I swing slower, then I've got a chance of making that happen. I'm going to create as long, full of swing, as much leverage as I can possibly create, and uh, let that club head go. But I'm going to do it slower so that the club has a chance to, to transfer as much of that energy as possible. Now, obviously, there's only, only certain times when I'm going to do that with a golf club, and that's if I can gain something. I mean, it makes no sense on this hole to me to hit driver and hit it real hard. I mean, what am I going to gain if I hit it 10 yards further? You know, a 50-yard shot versus a 60-yard shot, or a 150-yard shot versus a 160-yard shot. I don't gain that much. But if I've got a par 5 out there that... If I, if I hit a normal drive, I can't get home under any circumstances, but if I hit a big drive, I can get home, and the penalty is not too severe in hitting that drive, I might have a little room to hit it, then I've got a reasonable gamble. And that's, that's what I'll do, and that's when I use that. So, but I want to use that same swing throughout the golf club, except when I hit a driver and I want to hit it further, so I, but I make every conscious effort I can to swing slower so I still don't destroy the tempo of my swing. So here we go if I want to hit one a little longer. Did that go in the lake over the green? <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't landed yet? Uh, it was long enough. Okay, and then I, fin then I always finish up a practice session with a few pitching clubs, a few sand wedge pitching shots, which is the same thing Jackie's done. And when I do that, I've, after finishing up with the driver, I want to get back to a little bit of feel, things I'm going to use around the green. So that's why I do, that's why I do this. Let's go to the first tee. Let's go to the first tee. 